Hello and welcome to a very special edition of the Israel Guys. We're not in Israel's heartland. We're actually in Houston, Texas in the United States of America. As you know, we're here for some rally for the heartland events. But right now, um, we are with a special guest from Israel's heartland who just happens to be here, Moriel from Shiloh, Shiloh, Israel's heartland. And I want to say thank you to the Voice of Healing News for letting us use their uh, mobile studio here. If you hear background noise, we got lots of people milling around. But uh, Moriel, you're here for a very special event that is like a, a conference about the red heifers. People might not believe it if we said that there's actually red heifers in Israel that potentially could be used as part of the rebuilding of the third temple. But that's what's going on, right? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. So in September of uh, last year, September 15th, we actually brought five red heifers from Texas over to Israel. Uh, the organization Bonet Israel, they're the ones who brought it over. Um, and now we have the heifers up north. It's at, they're actually in a disclosed location because of security reasons. Uh, but we're moving them to Shiloh and we're building a visitor center there. Uh, the visitor center is going to be also for people to come and find out more about the red heifers, learn about them. Um, and also it's going to be a research center so that we can research and find out how we can have the highest chance of keeping them red and breeding more red heifers that we might need for the future. Well, so red heifers, are you saying that there's a potential that the third temple could be built soon? Yes, sir. So it's actually very interesting because uh, Maimonides, in Hebrew it's Rambam, he wrote that there were nine red heifers that were used over the course of, of biblical history. The first one was Moses and uh, eight other ones that were used in the first and second temple. And he writes that the tenth red heifer uh, will be used by the Mashiach. So I guess we're living in the times of Mashiach. So how long are we talking about? Are the red heifers ready now? Um, they're they're not ready yet because they have to be of age, which is above the age of two. And the ones we have now are about a year and four months old. So we have a bit of a, a little bit to wait. Can you just tell us like the story? Because from what I understand, these heifers came from the U.S., right? Yes. Even from Texas? From is Texas, right? yeah. And he actually... So what happened? Yeah. They, one of them came from one of the farms here in Houston, very close by. Um, and the other ones in other areas and in, in around Dallas. Um, so it's very, there's some very cool stories about what happened there. It's very, very hard to find a pure red heifer because there's so many laws regarding, um, it's so easy for them to be disqualified. Well, and you just said there's only been nine red heifers? That's true. There's only been nine that have been used. Um, and it's very hard to find them because once they get their ear tagged, they're out. If they have any white or black hairs, they're out. If you just lean on it by mistake, they're out. Yeah, anything that's done that you do, uh, you you lean on them, you put something on them, they're done. If it's for their own sake, then it's fine. But if, if it's for you or for someone else, then they're disqualified. So it's very, very difficult. And when the guys were out there in, uh, in Texas looking, searching, hunting for the red heifers, uh, there's a story that Byron Stinson, who's from uh, Texas, he was helping us out a lot, and he still is. Uh, he, uh, they went to pray to find the, one of the red heifers. And they're praying and praying and they finished praying, they came around the bush and they literally saw a mama red heifer giving birth on the spot to a pure red heifer. And they said, nobody touch it, don't go near it, don't tag it, don't do anything. Uh, so it was a very interesting journey and bringing them over to Israel was, was a whole another story. So tell me again, how many do you have in Israel right now? Right now we have five. Um, and we're still searching for more. I'm actually going to Phoenix uh, Wednesday morning. We have another possible red heifer there. I'm going to be going there to inspect the, the heifer there because we're looking for the perfect red heifer. We want to have this mitzvah, the commandment of the red heifer. We want it to be done in the most beautiful way as possible. Passover is such a special time here in Israel. Preparations have made the whole land, especially Jerusalem, take on a renewed air of excitement. If you're not able to make it to the holy city this Passover, you need to check out our friends at Blessed by Israel. They have an entire array of awesome products from the promised land. Olive oil, ceramics, coffee, soap, cosmetics, perfumes, and much, much more. 
Don't buy your products from Walmart or Amazon this Passover. Make your exodus and find the best that money can buy at blessedbyisrael.com or click the link down in the description below. Even better, this Passover season, they're offering you $5 off your order when you use the promo code PASSOVER. Head over to blessedbyisrael.com or click the link down below. Use discount code PASSOVER for $5 off your order. This year, during the holiday season, stand with the heartland of Israel. So the red heifer could be available for a potential uh, rebuilding of the third temple in just eight months. Yes, sir. Will you be ready with everything else by that time? Well, I think it's more of a question of uh, if the people are ready. You know, we have everything in place. We have the priests. We have the heifers. We have the, the spot on the, uh, the Mount of Olives. We have... What's significant about the spot on the Mount of Olives? So the red heifer ceremony needs to take place... Biblically. Biblically on the Mount of Olives, not on the Temple Mount. So uh, we even have that ready. And all we need is for the people to wake up and understand that this is the time. And when the people say this is the time, what happens? Then we do a huge ceremony. We have people come from all over the world. Um to come to the ceremony and celebrate with us. Is this a moment when Isaiah's prophecy of my house should be called a house of yes, prayer sir. for all nations could start? Yes, sir. I really believe that that's, that's what's going to be. The temple, in my eyes and how I understand uh, the perspective of Judaism, is that exactly like you said, it, that the third temple is going to be a house of prayer for all of the nations. It's a center for people to come together and worship God together and spread peace throughout the world. So another question, this is a little more political. Why are we seeing, why is the, somehow, I don't think everybody understands, there's a political, uh, just a, a dynamite about the Temple Mount. And I want to hear from your perspective because you're heavily involved in a spiritual high of seeing God's presence restored back to the center, the epicenter of the whole planet, and that's Jerusalem, the center of Jerusalem, the Temple Mount. Tell me in your words why the most severe, most fierce battle on the planet, every news agency in the entire world is covering what? Right now, Ramadan, the Islamic factions of every sort, mostly hostile to the idea that you're presenting right now of a third temple. That's This is like dynamite in that world. So I want you to talk about this. Um, how, does this how does this relate? How do you answer that question? There's so much happening in the world, so many hostile enemies attacking Israel from the really the epicenter, Jerusalem. Um, how do we get to the third temple in just eight months? How do we get there? Well, I wish I had the answer to that question. <laughs> uh, maybe if I had the answer, I would be the Messiah. But uh, <laughs> Well, listen, I think that, first of all, it's a question of education. Uh, within the Jewish circles, first of all, and then from there, it should spread out, you know, to the other nations, including the Muslims, including the Christians. Um, you know, I have some, I have some Arab Muslim friends, um, and I always joke around with them. And I say, listen, we have the same interests here. You know, let's let's just, you know, build a nicer building instead of the Dome of the Rock. And we'll do barbecues all day. You know, we bring <laughs> lamb. It's we bring lamb offerings. I, you guys love, love lamb. That's what I say. You guys like lamb. We like lamb. Let's just do it together. And you know, we'll come together and have a good we'll time. Have some special prayers. Yeah. You know that you guys could pray. We you got pray five times. We'll pray three times. No problem. <laughs> so, but you got to answer the question on the political uh, dynamite of the world. Why is why are they? Can you can you answer why is it why is it so much upheaval? Why are there Hamas flags? Uh, being thrown on the temple right now, Temple Mount right now, and address the battle. Why do you see there being? A, is it a coincidence that all hell breaking loose on the Temple Mount is like accompanied at the same moment that there's a potential light shining through of a of a third temple? Is there? Is that battle? What is your thoughts on that battle that's there? The truth is. Um the way I see it is that the Islamic world is kind of, uh, let's say, the Islam Islam is is very very similar to Judaism. I don't know if you guys have read the Quran or, or learned a little about about Islam. It's very very similar, but the problem is is that it's almost like replacement theology in Christianity that. 
you know, the Jews sinned and they left God and God left them. And now the new correct religion is Islam. And, it, and, and they even say that, you know, uh, the Jews themselves, uh, Bnei Israel, the ch children of Israel, used to be Muslim. Used to, they used to be Muslim. And then they strayed away from the path of Islam. And now the real Islam is the only, the, you know, wow. is in the book of the Quran and whoever follows the Prophet Muhammad. Um, and I, that's the way I see it, that there's really a, a, a religious conflict which is in the background here. Because the second the people of Israel come back to Israel and especially to the Temple Mount and want to rebuild the Temple, then that means that our prophecies are coming true. And it kind of... Uh, you know, knocks down their, their building that they, that they built. So that's the way I see it. So we're both involved in, you live in Shiloh, we're based in Mount Gerizim, Mount of Blessing in Israel. We see and are part of a lot of biblical prophecy coming to pass. You know, Jeremiah talked about the vineyards coming to life in Judea and Samaria. Um, we're bringing people from all over the world to participate in prophecy. Obviously, this, these red heifers being brought to Israel is also a part of biblical prophecy, right? How does that fall into uh, the prophetic story? Because people all over the world, Christians and Jews, I think are um, watching what's happening in Israel and seeing it as a part of redemption, right? And they want to know, how can we part of, be part of that? How are these red heifers uh, fitting into that, this story of uh, the redemption that's happening in so Israel. So exactly, I think it's I think it's a process. Um, if we look, we go back 75 years to the founding of the state of Israel. That's the first step towards the redemption. People flooding, you know, Jews flooding from all over the world. Uh, kibbutz Galuyot in Hebrew, it's called. That people come from all of the different exiles, come back to the land of Israel. That's the next step. Then we we reconquered Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. We gave it back, but. We did conquer it. That was our biggest mistake. And by the way, my Muslim friend tell me that. They said, it's your fault. You guys made that mistake. Um, but that's the next step. The red heifers, that's the next step. The building of the, of the temple, that's the next step. So we're moving in the right direction. Um, and it's all one process that we're, you know, so lucky to be part of. Moriel, when, when President Trump went to move the American embassy to Jerusalem, everyone told him, you're gonna cause World War III. I was on the ground there. I'm sure you were on the ground there too. Did you any? Did you witness any World War III? Kind I didn't of, see any World War III. Nothing happened. No, sir. Everyone says that when you decide, and when the Jewish people decide to build the Third Temple, all hell's gonna break loose, and there's gonna be another. There's gonna be World War III. Um, what do you say? Is there gonna be peace brought by the Temple, or will there be war? I think we should go back to Islam because uh, it's very interesting. So my friends there told me um, that there's actually a verse in the Quran that says that God gave the Jews, basically kicked them out of the land twice. He gave them two opportunities and then brought them back. And if they do good, they'll do good to, for everyone. And if they do bad, they do bad to themselves and for everyone. And they told me, if you guys do good, and you guys come and rebuild the temple, then that's what God wants. But right now, what you guys are doing is not good. What you guys are doing is not good at all. And that's, and, and that's the proof that you guys, uh, you know, you guys left him and he left you. So it's, I think in the end of the day, you know, we're kind of scared of them and their reaction and, 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 and everybody else's reaction. But we're very close, you know, and I think it's just like, Sometimes you just have to make one little step that's going to bring someone closer to you, uh, bring two people together. And sometimes it seems so far apart, especially with all the, you know, terrorist attacks and things like that. But at the end of the day, I think most people, they want peace. They want to live and they want to believe in God. They want to express their, their, their belief. And I think that there's a way that we could do that together. And you're saying that the Third Temple would indeed bring peace, not war. That's what I think. That's what I believe. Amazing. Uh, if people want to find out more about the Red Heifer Project, where can they connect with you? Um, so everybody can w visit our website, boneisrael.com, uh, and follow us on social media. We got Instagram, YouTube, all those things, uh, Bone Israel. And I, I do some updates uh, usually weekly about the Red Heifers, about other projects that we have. 
uh, that were rebuilding Israel, especially in Judea and Samaria and in Jerusalem. Amazing. So uh, you guys know we're always inviting you to come to Israel's Biblical Heartland. So in case coming to uh, pick grapes in the vineyard wasn't enough of an incentive, pretty soon they'll be able to come to Shiloh, right? Yeah. And actually see the red heifers. For sure. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are really interested in that. Um, if you're, if that fascinates you and you want to come to Israel's heartland and see the red heifers, drop us down a com uh, drop a comment down below. Let us know what you think, guys. Make sure you subscribe. We're in Houston, but uh, we'll all be back in the biblical heartland very soon. And uh, thank you so much, Moriel. Thank you for having me. Pleasure meeting you guys.